Now, because AMD Ryzen is using the same motherboard socket, you can ultimately switch out a first generation Ryzen CPU from 2017 for a brand new third gen processor without having to upgrade to another newer motherboard socket, so you don't have to change anything but the processor. And so let's say you bought a processor, a 4 core processor from 2017, you can actually now switch it out for a 12 core, 24 threaded part and that is exactly exactly what I did so sorry about that I um, I bought this it's a one it's a $500 processor and we're going to compare the experience from going from a 179 US dollar processor to this $500 beast coming up and so to be clear the only thing I upgraded on this PC was the CPU itself furthermore obviously not everybody needs a 12 core processor and if you're only planning on gaming the 3600 is a much better purchase for about $200 and I've linked up a video down below that shows you the difference between the 3600 versus the 3900X in game and what you can expect here anyway in terms of system what are we running this on so alright so we got an Asus x 370 crosshair hero 6 we got a pair of engines 16 gigs lpx 3200 megahertz currently running in its native 3200 dccp profile and it should be said that they are running very stable also something that i wasn't able to achieve on the older 1700 without the system blue screening and being very very unstable and so i'm very happy about the memory being a lot more stable on sen 2 and so that seems like amd finally got that is right and as for the GPU I'm running the Asus ROG 2080 Ti Strix OC also we got a 120 gig SSD from Kingston it's called the A400 nothing to really brag about and finally yeah we got the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo with dual 120 fans anyway if you are thinking about doing a swap on your system as well first you want to look up what kind of motherboard you have AMD's new processes can be quite thirsty when it comes to power draw so you want to make sure you have a pretty good motherboard that is able to handle the extra power and to be more specific it comes down to the VRM and the heat sinks around them and so if you have a slightly more expensive motherboard let's say an X370 or an X470 you should be going for the most part and as for the B350 and the B450 I simply recommend googling your motherboard model number and see how many phases your board has if it's compatible with Zen 2 for the most part yes they should B. Yeah, you might not be able to run the 12 core part. That being said, you can obviously run a 8 core. And to be fair, an 8 core should be more than enough for most people out there anyway. And as for our system, I wanted to keep everything identical except for the CPU just to see how much you can actually gain by just swapping out the CPU without touching anything else. Now, I should also say that yes, the older 1700 was slightly overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz. The new 30 3900X however the $500 CPU I should say is running stock and research has shown that overclocking isn't doing that much on Zen 2 and it seems like it's just better to let the system figure this out by itself and this has a name and it's something that AMD calls precision boost and if you're interested in what this means and how it works in more details I'll link up a video from AMD down below that explains PBO in much greater detail the point is it's worth having activated guys now a couple of practical things to have in mind if you're interested in doing what i just did here so because i'm using a much older motherboard that i bought at the beginning when the first ever ryzen processor was released back in 2017 and so if you think about this this is a much older motherboard and so the brand new processor that we got with us today wasn't developed back then and so as you can imagine you're swapping out the processor from 2017 for the much newer uh, 2019 processor and plug on the system and plug in the cords and boot up the system ain't really gonna work and although the CPU will physically fit fine in the socket internally there are going to be a few issues so imagine trying to play season 4 of Fortnite without having the necessary patch installed on your hard drive and as you can imagine yeah the game won't run what we need to do first is to update the so called microcode or BIOS to the latest update that supports these new CPUs 
Horizon. And this is a firmware update that AMD released a few weeks ago prior to the release of these new processors. And there are several ways of how you can install and download this and you find more information as your motherboard vendor. Now some vendors let you do this without having to start the system which can be very convenient. So we're gonna try and see if the system actually starts. This BIOS update that we are currently running on or microcode that we are running on right now should be compatible with Sam 2 but yeah there's been a lot of bugs and whatnot so it might work but there might be some minor difficulties as well so let's find out. So let's wait and see if we get any screen. So it seems like we are stuck on Q code 7. So what we need to do now is to update the BIOS. Now the cool thing with this particular motherboard is that you have something called, I think it's called Q flash. Anyway, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen here so you guys can see what it is. Basically, you can put the latest BIOS update on the USB stick and simply stick it in. And there's a button on the back of the motherboard. You press for a couple of seconds and the motherboard will update itself and you don't have to swap out to a compatible processor which is kind of nice we're gonna do that now and then we're gonna get back and see if we can actually get some sort of screen here so the bias update is complete we're gonna try and see if the system starts I have my fingers crossed because if, if it doesn't work this time we got some serious problems once again it seems like it's stuck on Q code 7 we're gonna have to investigate this it might take a while but here in this video it's just gonna take a couple of seconds I'll be back guys 1.0.0.3 AB let's try it out and see if this actually works and we're stuck on Q code 7 again. We gotta keep testing. All right, so apparently we made it inside. It is time to start testing and see what four additional cores can add to your gaming experience. Now, after hitting a few bumps along the way, I finally managed to boot up the system. And in case you're wondering how I did it, you can read more about it in the description down below. Now, once inside Windows 10, I was immediately noticing a huge difference. So everything from the initial boot to browsing the file system and opening up Chrome and starting games, everything felt a lot quicker than before. I wouldn't say that the difference was as big as it was when I first switched from a spinning hard drive to a flash based SSD, cause that upgrade was insane, but there are definitely small subtle things that you will be noticing that I wasn't expecting at all. Anyway, we are gonna be focusing on games, but I wanted to give you guys an idea what to expect here outside gaming as well, and so with that said, let's just first look at the software called Cinebench that uses the process to render a scene in real time and it gives you score based on how fast your computer can render the scene and it focuses on using the CPU and so higher clock speed as well as more cores is of course going to be beneficial here and this is where things start getting interesting now, out of the box we're getting 7000 points in the multi-threaded test and as you can see we are beating the much more expensive Threadripper CPU and this is a 16 core 32 thread part which is very 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 impressive and compared to our older system which scored about 3600 points in multi and 381 in single that means that we pretty much double our performance here in multi-threaded performance with just 50% more cores and moving on to Adobe Premiere Pro CC now this is another editing software and a very common software among content creators and so this is a file that I rendered it's a 4k 60 fps file and as you can see we pretty much cut the number in half and yeah with that done and clear let's move on to some gaming performance and start with time spy now this is testing in 1440p as for graphics we can see that the numbers are about the same here since we are using the same graphics card but yeah physics did get a nice increase as you can see now physics is generally using the cpu instead now let's look at fortnite so you can expect to gain quite a lot of performance here now we know that fortnite is fairly cpu bound and with the 12 core processor i so a nice boost actually and quite frankly the game feels a lot more stable than before and on the older 1700 I had small spikes and hiccups every once in a while and now it just feels so much smoother and that's pretty much the same for every game I tested here and let's take CSGO as an example this is a whole new gaming experience on this system now even Assassin's Creed Odyssey we get a huge huge increase in the 1% low as you can see and you can definitely feel the performance increase even though the 
the average frame rate stayed roughly about the same for this game and Shadow of the Tomb Raider and the stable frame rate and frame time over time feels more consistent on this 12 core part. Now guys I feel the urge to highlight this again, not everybody needs a 12 core processor and if you're only planning on gaming alone the Ryzen 5 3600 for $200 is a much better purchase. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say, seeing this huge increase in frames per second by upgrading to AMD's latest Zen 2 architecture, as you can see Zen 2 is being a lot more gaming friendly compared to the older first Zen architecture coming out in 2017. With that said, let's look at thermals and temperatures. Again, I want to remind you that I'm using the RTX Freezer Esport 34 Duo. Now, after you've been playing some Fortnite and after you've been doing some rendering in Cinebench, HW Monitor was reporting highs of 81 Celsius here on the 3900X and idle temperatures of about 50 degrees. And compared to the older 1700, who ran much cooler at about 65C under heavy load and about 60C and about 40C during idle, with ambient temperatures around 22C, gives you a better perspective how hot this CPU actually gets. And so yeah, the temperatures went up about 12 to 15 degrees when switching over, which is kind of expected, knowing that we are running on a much beefier CPU, with higher clock speeds in general, with an additional 4 cores and another 8 threads, and so effectively 50% more. Now again, there is a huge difference in price here, the, the old Older CPU was about $179 and this is a $5 CPU and I know it's a bit crazy to pay this much for a CPU alone and just to be clear here guys, graphics card choice is far more important than the CPU choice just to be clear and I definitely don't recommend you guys to go out and buy and spend $500 on a CPU if you're already sitting on a pretty shitty graphics card so you definitely want to prioritize the graphics card if you're mainly focusing on gaming as upgrading your graphics card is the most impactful performance upgrade that you can do. Anyway, if you're planning on using your computer for more than just gaming alone, the 3900X is a beast. Alright, so that pretty much wraps up this video guys, now if you have any questions, you can either hit me up on Discord or you can just ask him in the comments below and I will get back to you as fast as I can. Now, <laughs> talking about Discord, it would be very fun to have you guys over there and as always, there's a link to the Discord server down below. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video and until next time, have an awesome day, right? Bye.